were prosecuted in the Western District of New York with over a thousand victims and a hundred million dollars of fraud. The sentencing for a former Rochester man convicted in a massive Ponzi scheme. Plus, the criminal charges the January 6th committee says former President Trump should face. And new details on what sparked an investigation into the Macedon police chief. Lots happening later on this week as we head into Friday in the weekend. A major powerful winter storm taking shape over the west tonight. It's going to bring a variety of weather and wind here. We'll talk about it tonight in the forecast. From your breaking news and weather authority on Fox Rochester, this is 13 Wham News at 10. Uh, tonight, two men going to prison for what prosecutors call one of the biggest Ponzi schemes ever discovered in western New York. The remainder of the money was used to finance lavish lifestyles of the defendants and others. Uh, today, Christopher Paris receiving 20 years behind bars. Good evening, I'm Matt Malloy. Prosecutors say Paris and his partner were behind a Ponzi scheme where victims lost more than $100 million. As 13 Wham! Cheyenne Walker reports, Paris is also accused of using the pandemic to scam people out of money. Cheyenne, good evening. Good evening, Matt. Prosecutors say Paris fraudulently promised to provide more than 100 million in 95 masks that he did not have the very that he did not have to various medical supply companies. That's in addition to the multi-million dollar Ponzi scheme. It's the largest Ponzi scheme ever prosecuted in Western New York. Christopher Paris and Perry Santillo were convicted of defrauding close to 1,000 investors out of more than $115 million. The defrauding of citizens and companies will not be tolerated in our society. Individuals who participate in this type of activity will be investigated and when proven that they have committed this type of fraud, they will be prosecuted, as we have shown today. Authorities say the Ponzi scheme started in 2008 and ran through 2017. It began where Paris and Santillo formed a development business in Rochester. The prosecutors say the two then pitched investment opportunities to victims, using funds from new investors to pay off old ones. The remainder of the money was used to finance lavish lifestyles of the defendants and others, to expand the scheme by purchasing additional investment advisor brokerage businesses so they could obtain new investors, and to pay operation, operating expenses and salaries of the businesses that they had purchased. Both men were eventually convicted in the Ponzi scheme after it collapsed. Paris was also convicted of fraud during the pandemic, promising masks he couldn't deliver. As part of the COVID fraud scheme, the defendant actually obtained upfront payments from approximately eight other entities in the amount of $7.4 million for fraudulently promising to provide in 95 mass. And Paris received 20 years in federal prison and must pay restitution to the victims. Santillo received 17 and a half years and must also pay restitution. Matt. Cheyenne, thank you. Stunning new developments today in the nation's capital. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack laying out evidence for the public, concluding that former President Trump was ultimately responsible for the insurrection and voting to make criminal referrals against him to the Justice Department. Now, the panel recommending the former president be charged with four crimes, inciting or assisting an insurrection, obstruction of an official proceeding of Congress, conspiracy to defraud the United States, and conspiracy to make a false statement. That criminal referral is mostly symbolic, but it does mark the end of the probe into what happened that day at the U.S. Capitol. Now, it is up to the Justice Department to decide whether to prosecute Trump, a 2024 presidential hopeful, and his associates. Meantime, jury selection did begin today in the trial of Dominic Pizzola, a Rochester man charged in the Capitol riot. Pizzola and five other members of the Proud Boys are charged with seditious conspiracy. Prosecutors argue the five worked together in a riotous effort to stop lawmakers from certifying the results of the 2020 presidential election. A pandemic-era border policy known as Title 42 will remain in place for now. 
It comes after the Supreme Court stepped in late today. The policy was set to end Wednesday. Christine Frizzau has the latest. An emergency appeal granted by the U.S. Supreme Court. The pandemic era policy known as Title 42, set to expire on Wednesday, will for now remain in place following a petition from governors in 19 Republican-led states. Some border states already overwhelmed by the massive numbers expected to double if and when Title 42 ends up getting lifted. We're getting five to 8,000 a day coming across the border. So Texas has had to bear the brunt of that. Still, other cities impacted as well. Two buses carrying migrants arrived in New York City Sunday. For the vast majority of them asking for asylum at our southern border, their goals sound like this. I want to try and get a work permit so I could start working and be able to put my girls in school. But among those fleeing corruption and violence, bad actors have already tried to get in. 180 people on the federal government's terror watch list have been detained at or near the southern border from the start of fiscal year 2022 until now. I don't know how many uh, suspected terrorists have crossed the border since Joe Biden, Alejandro, Alejandro Mayorkas has been in power. But someday we're going to find out. It's going to be a bad day for America. For now, though, these final weeks of 2022, expected to be the worst yet for those working on the front lines, might be made just a little bit easier by this decision from the U.S. Supreme Court. In Washington, I'm Christine Frazau. Well, this Christmas may be the coldest Christmas the states have seen in several years, including here in New York. Roughly 55 million people will likely see some below zero temperatures. Uh, Scott is here to let us know uh, how cold it's going to be for our Christmas and what the next 24 hours are going to look like as well. Scotty. Oh, yeah, we're going right to Christmas. Ho, 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 it's going to be cold. Have a look here. <laughs> Thanks. That's, that's the best I can do. All right, so uh, areas of snow and blowing snow on Saturday, 19. Okay, that's uh, that's the actual air temperature. Winds west and frisky. And then on Christmas Day, Merry Christmas, coldest one in 22 Christmases. Yeah, you got to go back to the year 2000. If you ever watch Conan O'Brien, you are now using a fall set of voice. All right, there's a look at what's going on uh, across the central part of the state, right down near 81, Cortland and Preble and Marathon. There is a, that's a tough area with these type of uh, snow scenarios. So it's going to be snowy there this evening. Wham Cam, right now it's 31. One more map for you. It's the hour by hour. And you can see that through the overnight, we're in the mid-20s. So what's the biggest concern for us late week? Is it the cold, wind, rain, snow? We'll let you know. Coming up. Scotty, thank you. Unity Hospital going into lockdown this morning following a threat from a former contract worker. Hospital officials say that contracted worker was fired last Friday and called threatening a leader in his previous department. Uh, that individual was never on the hospital campus today and was taken into custody by police. The lockdown at the hospital was lifted after 40 minutes and we're told the emergency department continued to receive patients as needed. Greece police are handling that investigation. Tonight, a second town hall let RG&E customers vent about high utility bills and billing errors. How do we have, as far as national security goes, a foreign European company operating an American electric and gas grid system? Let's bring RG&E home, let's make RG&E local, and let's make RG&E a public utility. Thank you. Neighbors at that town hall discussing the possible public takeover of the company and replacing it with a more affor affordable community-owned utility. The parent company of RG&E is currently based in Spain uh, and grosses nearly $100 million a year from Rochester customers. RG&E recently announcing it is looking to hike rates by nearly 20%. We continue to learn more about the investigation into the alleged actions of the Macedon police chief. According to our partner, the Times of Wayne County, police were called to Flaherty's restaurant earlier this month. We're told Chief Fabian Rivera was in a highly intoxicated state, fell and cut his face open. He reportedly also refused to leave and threatened employees. He was taken to the hospital for treatment. While deputies and medical personnel were handling the situation, Rivera allegedly continued his tirades. The Times reporting that Rivera decided to voluntarily take unpaid time off. The town supervisor says an investigation is underway. 
Some local clergy members are pushing for funding for new technology that would help improve police accountability. The United Christian Leadership Ministry wants Rochester City Council to approve funding to purchase new software, which is designed to predict any potential misconduct on the force. Advocates say it would benefit both police and the community. We're excited because now there's going to be a relationship and it will capture and track positive interaction, including supervisory acknowledgement, department awards. If they get awards for these officers, they deserve to be recognized. And it will help us, the community, be able to deal with those officers that need help. City Council expected to vote on that proposal this week to purchase the software, which would help provide early intervention for at-risk officers. Kenneth DeLand Jr. back in the U.S. tonight after the St. John Fisher student was the subject of an international missing person search. DeLand was studying in France for the semester when he disappeared in late November. He contacted his family from Spain this past Friday and flew back home with his mother over the weekend. We're told the DeLand family does plan to hold a news conference later this week. Still ahead here on Fox Rochester, the new audio clue in the Idaho College murder investigation. And new tonight, the verdict in the latest Harvey Weinstein trial.